So welcome to this session of the TRUE Portfolio Program. TRUE has always been popular with portfolios of multiple buildings, and there has been a real need to create a more efficient and cost-effective process to more readily enable them to not just certify buildings, but to apply the zero waste framework provided by TRUE at scale. So the TRUE team has developed an approach just for portfolios that offers an alternate streamlined documentation submittal and verification process. And we will be reviewing this in detail over the course of this hour. My name is Emily DeKramer and I'm the TRUE Certification Program Manager at GBCI. I manage the day-to-day -day operations and ongoing evolution of the TRUE rating system. And I'll be taking you through the first part of the agenda today. So our agenda is I'm gonna start with a general introduction of the program, and then we're going to go through a detailed overview on who is eligible, the process, and how to prepare your portfolio for going through this process. And then the last half of the webinar will be a moderated panel featuring some true users um, that have portfolios that are currently rolling out true across that portfolio. The learning objectives for today are to discuss the purpose and benefits of the TRUE Portfolio Program, to identify who is eligible for the TRUE Portfolio Program, explain how the TRUE Portfolio Review process works, and describe how to implement TRUE across a portfolio of projects. So with that, let's get started. As many of you know, TRUE seeks to instill a more circular economy in which all resources are valued for their highest and best use. TRUE was developed as a leadership standard to recognize individual facilities that have defined and achieved their zero waste goals. While so far we've been changing and transforming the materials management industry just one project at a time, we know that portfolios can expand our mission of global market transformation. Fortunately, organizations are moving beyond single facilities and committing to zero waste targets across their portfolio of assets. We've been seeing organizations minimizing resource consumption, preventing waste, and redesigning material life cycles across their multiple properties, transforming themselves and the future of resource management by applying zero waste strategies at scale. Thus, the True Portfolio Program was developed by GBCI to recognize this transformational leadership of zero waste implementation at scale. By implementing zero waste at scale, we can make much needed acceleration happen of the positive incomes outcomes of people, planet, and profit. Organizations are finding value engaging with TRUE because it helps them engage with local and global communities while also benefiting the bottom line. By implementing the zero waste strategies represented in the TRUE rating system, you can save money, resources, and energy, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, liability, and pollution, reinvest resources locally, and finally, create jobs. In addition to these broad positive outcomes, enrolling in the portfolio program uh, brings more specific value adds. Uh, first, participating in the program allows you to deploy a consistent waste management framework across facilities in various stages of performance, to demonstrate leadership in the global zero waste movement and advance your commitment to achieve zero waste and related sustainability objectives, to more easily scale existing zero waste efforts across multiple assets. And finally, it allows you to more readily report on portfolio-wide zero waste activities for ESG and other sustainability frameworks. In addition, there are some defined benefits you received by enrolling in the program. Uh, first, you gain efficiency by leveraging the similarities between multiple buildings to streamline the documentation and certification process. You will benefit from economies of scale while also achieving the recognitions you desire faster. You will receive ongoing support throughout the process from true team members via various sessions and calls. You will receive access to resources such as tools and templates, as well as one or more free advisor, free true advisor registrations, depending on the volume of projects. And finally, the program will allow you to realize the financial benefits of pursuing true across the portfolio by incentivized pricing. And we'll have a little more on the fees a little later. So uh, let's dive into an overview, a little more detail about uh, the program and how it works. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to mention there is a detailed guidance document on the TRUE website on the portfolio program, which should be used in conjunction with the TRUE Guide to Certification. These are critical resources with all of the information from today, plus further details, so be sure to download and review them. 
So what is a portfolio and who's eligible to engage in the program? A uh, portfolio is a collection of individual or group projects owned or managed by a single organization. The True Portfolio Program will be available for multiple buildings on different sites or for campuses certifying their site incrementally building by building. Projects in the portfolio can be different sizes and located in different regions across the world, or they can be on one property, such as a campus. If the organization has multiple types of projects that share distinct sets of credits due to differences in buildings, operations, waste, ownership, strategies, or application types, it's advised to enroll them as separate portfolios. This ensures the most similarity possible between the projects within a portfolio and allows for an even more streamlined review process for each individual project. Buildings on the same site could take this approach as well if desired grouping like buildings. If assistance is needed defining the portfolio and the projects within it, contact us to be put in touch with a true team member. To gain from the efficiency offered by the portfolio approach, portfolios must have the following characteristics to participate. Uh, a minimum of five projects, a designated portfolio manager or small team, all projects owned or managed by one organization, and also some portfolio-wide standardized processes and policies in place to maximize the number of credits that will be the same for all projects within a portfolio. So how does the process work? Achieving true certification through the portfolio program involves these main steps. Uh, first, you enroll your portfolio and pay the requisite fees. Then you submit for a portfolio review. Then you register and submit individual projects for certification based on your portfolio review results. And finally, you maintain certification following the standard maintenance gui guidelines. And now we'll go through each of these steps in a little more detail. Uh, first is enrolling your portfolio. Uh, the organization will define its portfolio and where it stands towards true certification. Once the portfolio is defined, or portfolios if there's going to be multiple, the organization will enroll it or them on the true website and pay the one-time enrollment fee. Projects from the portfolio can be registered at this time or can be registered after completion of the portfolio review. Projects may be registered over time in groups or one at a time. And then finally, you will attend a portfolio orientation session with true staff to understand how the process works and clarify any questions you may have. The next step in the process is the portfolio review. During the portfolio review, you will submit portfolio level documentation and example documentation from some projects. After all phases of the portfolio review are complete, you will receive a catalog of pre-approved minimum program requirements and credits that can be used by individual projects in the portfolio. The narratives and documentation here can address both pre-certification and certification requirements to enable some future projects to do pre-certification and others to do certification. Documentation and narratives are submitted at this stage for all uh, minimum program requirements or NPRs and all credits that may be attempted by projects in the portfolio. At a minimum, documentation must be submitted for at least sufficient credits to achieve the true minimum true certification status of 31 points. If the portfolio anticipates targeting higher levels of true certification for their individual projects, then it is encouraged that the portfolio submits all credits that will be needed to obtain those higher levels of certification. Even if a credit will be used minimally, it should be submitted during the portfolio review stage. There are no requirements for how frequently a credit must be used by individual projects in the portfolio. The goal is to have very little or no unique credits submitted on the individual projects. Maximizing the credits submitted during the portfolio review will facilitate the streamlining of individual project reviews later. To begin the portfolio review, you will submit the true portfolio submission form. This is very similar to our standard certification application form except that the information for all projects will be submitted instead of information for just one project. In the form, you will indicate which credits will be included in the portfolio submission, the type of portfolio credit, and you will provide all the required narratives. In addition, there are two types of portfolio level documentation that are submitted at this stage, portfolio master and prototype documents. 
based on applicability and the strategies uh, utilized, you will determine which MPRs and credits will be submitted as master or prototype. We'll dive into more detail on these in a minute. And finally, there will be audit documents showing implementation examples for credits and MPRs that were prototyped. These documentation examples may be from an actual project or maybe a complete sample document and or narrative meeting all credit requirements. An example from at least one project is required. However, if there are variances or unique examples across the portfolio for how the credit requirements will be met, all variations should be submitted so that GBCI has a complete understanding of how the credit will be applied across the portfolio. Uh, one note here require, uh, regarding the acquired diversion data. Well, data itself and diversion performance is site or project specific and is required to be submitted at the individual project level for each project. An example data set must be submitted as part of the portfolio review. Uh, in other words, diversion data must be prototyped uh, so that GBCI understands uh, what you're tracking and how. So what are master and prototype documents? Master documents are narratives and documents that may be applicable at an organizational level and will be the same for all or most projects in the portfolio. Uh, in other words, one document satisfies the MPR or credit requirements for multiple projects. These will be reviewed and awarded once for all projects. Some examples include, but are not limited to, organizational goals and commitments, policy documents, reports, guides, enterprise-wide agreements, screenshots, and even training documents. Prototype documents are narratives and documents in indicating standard practices, actions, strategies, or guidance that will be followed by all projects, but where the implementation or performance is project-specific. Prototyping a credit may be best in situations where there are varied implementation strategies across the portfolio for how the credit requirements will be met. It is recommended that prototype narratives and documentation be provided for all credits which may be attempted by projects in the portfolio and for which portfolio master documentation is not applicable. Credits that are prototyped will be reviewed and pre-approved for the projects in the portfolio. Some examples of prototype documents include uh, waste audit SOP forms or templates, uh, something like a landscaping policy where there may be an organizational level policy to reduce waste, but each site uh, does that in their landscaping in a different way. Uh, data tracking procedures and contamination reduction procedures or SOPs. After you've submitted your documentation, GBCI will conduct a review following the standard true review process uh, with the preliminary and final review and a response period in between. At the end of the review, you will receive an updated review report with final decisions on all NPRs and credits. Note that no recognition is issued following the completion of the portfolio credit review. Once received, if any updates are needed the to the portfolio NPRs or credits, the portfolio manager may submit those to GBCI at any time, separate from the review of individual projects within the portfolio. The initial portfolio enrollment includes up to one update a year. And then finally, portfolio NPRs and credits will expire every three years and must be renewed. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Once the portfolio review process is complete, you can register one or more projects in your portfolio online at discounted rates using our standard online registration form. While it is recommended to register all projects in the portfolio at once, projects may be registered over time in groups or one at a time. Projects may be registered during the portfolio enrollment process as well, um, and then uh, after the portfolio review is complete. There are no deadlines by which the first project or the entire portfolio must register or certify. Once individual projects are registered, you are ready to submit as many projects as you'd like for pre-certification or certification using portfolio MPRs and credits. Projects can be submitted as they are ready for certification. Again, there are no deadlines or specific volume thresholds required. The overall certification process for the individual projects in the portfolio is slightly different than the standard true certification process, since it relies on audits to streamline the review of larger volumes of projects and for quality control. Example documentation is reviewed for the first three projects and those thereafter are randomly selected for full reviews during an audit. 
let's break down what to expect during this phase of the process. For the first three individual projects submitted, the review will follow the standard true review process and standard review timelines. Narratives and documents already submitted during the portfolio credit review do not need to be resubmitted. The following documentation is submitted on these first three projects. Uh, first, the true certification application form indicated all credits being attempted by the project, which were awarded or pre-approved at the portfolio review, and which are project specific credits if applicable. Uh, next, you submit audit documentation or narratives confirming implementation of any prototype MPRs or credits that were pre-approved during the portfolio review but not awarded. In many cases, the documentation is as simple as a photograph or narrative demonstrating how portfolio level guidance, policies, or procedures are implemented by the project. Uh, you also submit divergent performance data and weight documentation and the data must meet the required credit or performance uh, diversion threshold for the recognition that's being pursued. And then finally, you submit all required documentation for any individual credits that are only applicable at the individual project level and have not been addressed in the portfolio review. If used, these unique credits should represent a small portion of the overall credits submitted. It is expected that there will be minimal to no new individual credits at the project level and all credits have been have previously been reviewed at the portfolio review. Once the first three projects have been submitted and reviewed, you may start submitting additional projects for review via an even further streamlined process. For these reviews, you will submit only a true portfolio project scorecard indicating all credits attempted by the project, diversion performance data for the NPRs and credits that require it, and also any required narratives that were not already provided, such as for credits attempted at the project level only. The review process for these projects will diverge from the standard review process. The review will consist of an initial review of your scorecard and documentation for completeness and compliance, and a subsequent resp response from GBCI within five business days with either an offer of certification or a notification that the project was randomly selected for an audit. The audit process ensures that the portfolio projects are in compliance with true standards and verify that your quality control processes are working effectively. The audit sampling rate will be based on the total volume of projects in the portfolio, the type of portfolio, and the quality of the submissions. The sampling rate typically ranges from 5 to 25%, with large portfolios having a further reduced sampling rate. If GBCI finds that you have failed certain credits or NPRs across multiple projects, the auditing rate may be increased and you may be subject to an additional fee. If the project is selected for an audit, the review will take place and you will be expected to provide more complete documentation. The documentation required during audit will be the same as identified for the first three projects, which we just discussed a minute back. You will provide this within eight weeks. GBCI will respond with its audit review results or request for clarifications within 15 business days uh, once the information is received. Your team will either submit responses to the clarification requests or a final results uh, may be received uh, and you will accept the review as final. As each project completes the review process, it will earn and celebrate the recognition from GBCI that it has attempted. While post-review activities and requirements are similar to that of a standard process project, there are some key differences for portfolios. Uh, first, there is only one case study submitted for all projects in the portfolio. The case study is submitted during the portfolio review instead of after the review process is complete. There is also only one online portfolio profile that will be completed for all projects in the portfolio. And then recognitions earned for multiple projects do not combine into one portfolio level recognition. It is still just a per project recognition. Certified projects will follow the standard maintenance and recertification guidelines to maintain their certification or recertify to a higher level. The following is uh, unique to portfolios. Annual data for all projects will be due on the same day each year. The certification validity term will end on the annual maintenance date that's closest to three years from the date of certification. And then finally, as mentioned earlier, portfolio NPRs and credits will expire every three years and must be renewed 
by confirming continued compliance with those credits and requirements and or providing updated information for any changes that have occurred as applicable. Uh, and finally, I wanna wrap up this, uh, this particular section with the fees. The fees for the program include a one-time $10,000 minimum enrollment fee, depending on the volume of projects and USGBC membership status. The enrollment fee covers the entire portfolio review process, as well as providing access to tools, templates, true advisor registrations, project planning support, and more. For individual projects within the portfolio, there will be the typical registration, pre-certification, or certification fees per project. However, they will be discounted based on the number of projects in the portfolio. Further incentivized pricing is available for portfolios with 500 projects or more. For recertification, there will be a flat fee available per portfolio based on the volume of projects in the portfolio. This fee includes both renewal and portfolio credits and project recertifications. Uh, you can visit our website for more details on fees or contact us to get connected with a true team member who can give you a customized quote for your portfolio. For the remainder of the session, we're gonna focus on how to get started with True across your portfolio. Sometimes the most difficult part of going zero waste enterprise wide is the scaling or how to roll it out effectively. The actions we will be discussing next are not required as part of the portfolio approach, but they're helpful for getting started. First, begin by determining the member of the team that will manage the portfolio as it goes through the true review process and who will be designated as the portfolio manager. The portfolio manager acts uh, as the primary point of contact with GBCI and will coordinate the completion of portfolio and certification applications for the portfolio. Multiple team members may act as portfolio managers to manage individual projects or groupings of projects within the portfolio, if applicable. For the greatest success, it is advised that the portfolio manager complete all applications for projects within the portfolio with the assistance of on-site personnel at each project. However, the portfolio manager may also select an individual at each project to complete the application. Also, uh, get started by learning more about TRUE get familiar with the requirements to achieve true certification and or pre-certification, uh, download and review the true rating system, guide to certification and other materials available on our website. It is strongly advised that the, the, the portfolio manager completes the true advisor training program for the best understanding of the program and the rating system. And keep in mind one or more complimentary registrations are provided with your enrollment in the portfolio program. Conducting an analysis of portfolio and individual project zero waste activities using the true rating system may be a good next step and can provide a comprehensive picture of the similarities and differences between projects and where they are on their journey to receiving recognition from true. You can also conduct a gap analysis at this stage by reviewing the credits to understand which you could earn now and which you could earn by implementing new policies and practices. Particularly focus on standardized ones that will apply to all or most projects and will further streamline the true portfolio application process. Utilizing the information gathered on similarities and differences between the projects in the portfolio, define the portfolio or portfolios if you have multiple that you may have and uh, the projects that it will contain. Make a plan and set some goals. We advise that you discuss what recognitions are desired by which projects, whether there's a particular certification level or point score to aim for on one or more projects, when the portfolio of individual projects may submit for review, and if there's a goal date in mind or staggered goal dates in mind to earn the recognitions by. Finally, start taking action in preparing the portfolio submission. Conduct analyses, collect data and documentation, and implement portfolio-wide policies and standard processes that may be needed to minimize the number of credits that will be unique to each project. As you proceed, save documents for your portfolio review submittal and if applicable, the individual project submittals and start drafting any required narratives. Be sure to reach out to us with any questions at truegbci.org. Um, at any point in the process, you may request to hold one or more meetings with true staff to ask questions and review the fees, process requirements or next steps for earning recognition for the projects in your portfolio. And with that, I'm now gonna pass it on to my colleague, Susie Westrup to lead the next segment of the webinar. 
Susie is the Director of, for Client Services with True. At USGBC, she works with clients and industry stakeholders to advance zero waste and a circular economy through education and supporting project teams along their journey to zero waste. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, first, I'm gonna introduce our panelists that we have here with us today, give them an, a little bit of an opportunity to say a bit more about their, um, their company and their commitments and, and what they're working on. And then we'll go to a larger panel. We'll stop sharing slides and just have a discussion. So first, um, Johan Engelbrecht is the Associate Director of Global Facilities Property Loss Control and sustainability for Colgate Palmolive Company, a consumer products company based in New York City. He is responsible for developing and supporting the implementation of Colgate's property loss control and sustainability programs and is a true advisor. Johan has been with Colgate for over 30 years in various project management and engineering roles in Africa, Europe, and the USA. Johan holds an MBA and a mechanical engineering degree from the University of Stellenbosch in South Africa. Welcome, Johan. Uh, next, we have Casey Mihalik. Casey is a Senior Technical Associate of Environmental Sustainability for Colgate Palmolive Company. She is responsible for developing and supporting the implementation of Colgate's environmental sustainability programs, including energy efficiency, climate, water stewardship, and waste reduction, and she is a true advisor. Prior to her 15 years at Colgate, Casey worked for Elementus Specialties and General Electric. Casey holds a BA in environmental science from the State University of New York at Plattsburgh, a master's in environmental management and policy from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and an MBA from Seton Hall University. Great. Uh, thanks, Susie, and, and thank you for having us as part of the webinar today. Uh, Johan and I are always excited to talk about Colgate's involvement with True, and we have a great story to share. Uh, to provide some context, uh, Colgate's company purpose is that we are reimagining a healthier future for all people, their pets, and our planet. And to support this purpose, we have a new ambitious goal as part of our 2025 sustainability and social impact strategy. And that is to have 100% of our global operations true zero waste certified. So as you can see on the map, our certifications are global. We have 22 certifications representing 12 countries on five continents. Right now we have three additional facilities that are in the preliminary review process. Uh, one of these being our first warehouse certification. And we have approximately 10 more sites actively working on their applications. Wow, well, thank you so much, first of all, for your commitment. I can't wait to hear more about how it's all happened um, when we get to our panel. Uh, next, we have Denise Braun, who is a lead and well accredited professional, as well as a Fitwell ambassador and Envision Sustainability professional and our favorite, a true advisor. She has over 15 years of experience in the sustainability field, starting in Brazil and then moving to the US. She worked on the first true certified high rise commercial building in the world and is responsible for leading true certification implementation and methodology for all types of commercial buildings, construction sites, shopping malls, manufacturing, and portfolios of various types of sites. Denise is part of the USGBC LA Board of Directors, and she serves as a zero waste and circularity expert for the USGBC Materials and Resources Technical Advisory Group. She's also a part of the Los Angeles Metropolitan Sustainability Committee. Denise? Thank you. Uh, it's also a pleasure to be here with everybody. Um, so really quick, I, I will um, give a uh, actual case study of a project that we are working on um, was pursue, that's pursuing the true platinum certification. This project's located um, in California and Washington, um, in specifically in Seattle. And um, the interesting part when this client came to us, it was uh, they have a zero waste um, goal, but they they never work in a true project before. And uh, true, the portfolio uh, system was not even um, formalized coming from USGBC, but we got a incredible support from Emily, Susie, uh, Celeste, and Stephanie Barger 
um, on how to approach this and it really helped the client to uh, standardize their internal documentation, their process, their vision related to, um, to waste and really help to make sure that all the leadership was in the same page when it comes to, to zero waste. Next slide, please. Um, so the, the process was, again, um, was interesting because it was like we were trying things. We didn't have like a very uh, uh, systematic uh, standard to follow. But what we did was we used the, the headquarters, which is the largest um, project. And that's the also what the client want to, to use the the. the the headquarters as you know the the pilot program uh the pilot project for for this uh portfolio um interesting that uh we started this work uh we did uh waste audits for them uh they first they reach out to us because they have to do lead waste audits for their lead certification and uh, we convinced them to actually since we're going to be there how about we do like a zero waste audit so they did that and then for the headquarters uh we also uh convinced them to do a gap analysis to to do true um and they we did that we presented the results to them they were very excited about it and then that's when they're like actually how about if we approach this as a portfolio uh one of the things that i want to mention uh, that Emily mentioned that really helped us in this project and other clients that we have as well uh, when it comes to portfolio is uh, when you have same, ve same vendors, especially uh, when it comes to upstream, so vendors uh, that actually we buy things from, uh, that helps a lot. So um, all the, the the projects that we are working with this clients and other clients, they buy, you know, the same uh, cleaning uh, products from the same from one vendor. So it's easier to um, talk to this vendor and make a um, a bigger change, like what, uh, again, what Emily mentioned, like a market transformation uh, when it comes to um, few vendors that you know several projects buy um, the materials from so that really helped us um the other thing uh, i want to mention is um i think there are a few questions in the q a as well re related to like uh, the diversion uh reporting and all the buildings need to be diverting um you know the 90 percent uh, which is the minimum for uh, the full certification. So yes, we need that. Uh, we need to prove if you have uh, three or like 200 projects, all of them need to prove that they are diverting 90%. Uh, because of that, for this client and also other clients that we're working with, uh, we they develop we they hire us on top of the the consulting for true and so on they hire us to create a global uh zero waste calculator that they are actually rolling out to all their offices uh, around the world so all the offices no matter if it's an entire building or just a, a commercial interiors just a space or few floors in a multi-tenant building all of them use the same reporting methodology when it comes to waste and this is really important when it comes to portfolio is to use um same documentation make sure that all the offices all the the locations are in the same page when it comes to data collection reporting uh policies and and other documentation next slide please that's my last slide uh um so just want to bring it up some challenges uh during this and uh, you know we we hear that from a lot of clients and a lot of uh companies uh how about covid uh, i don't know if emily will reach out will we'll mention that uh but definitely covid impacted some of the decisions um, and there are several uh, regulations and informations coming from the government related to like even like single use versus reusables and all that. 
Um, but uh, I just want to acknowledge that, you know, uh, if you have that in your mind, you have that question, uh, we also, all of us been in through this. So we, we're happy to, uh, to talk to you more about how to uh, overcome those challenges that the pandemic uh, brought to us. Um, and then I'm going to uh, reach out to just like to mention a, a little bit about opportunities. Uh, this is a really, uh, I, I love what Emily mentioned, again, I'm going to mention, uh, is that the market transformation, really like when it comes to portfolio, the, uh, the power of changing the world, it's, uh, it's way bigger when it comes to like, oh, there are multiple projects that we, we want uh, the same goal that really uh, change um, the uh, the speech the what we're bringing to our partners and our vendors. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Denise. Um, and thanks, Casey, for uh, also the recap of, of where your portfolio is. So um, I have a few questions for you. I think um, before I, I go much further, um, just to be sure that everyone attending understands really the amazing benefit we have of having both Colgate Palmolive on this webinar as panelists and Denise, because when it comes to true certification, we have many projects that are done by um, sustainability professionals that are within corporations, much like Johan and Casey. But then we also have folks like Denise who are in the consulting world and, and working with multiple customers. And so I think it'll be great for you to get both of their perspectives. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate that for folks that um, maybe didn't know that that was super clear. So um, before I go uh, much further, I, I do know that um, Casey, Denise mentioned about like this pilot project that her client started with at their headquarters. So I'm curious with Colgate Palmolive, um, how did you guys get started with True? Because I think there are some folks based on our poll that um, haven't even gotten started. So let's let's start there first. Yep, great, great question. So, so we actually um, started with True back in 2017 and we piloted um, the program with a pet nutrition facility in the United States. We really wanted to do a, a test and learn to see you know, how much time it would take, what resources were needed, and really for um, you know, myself and, and Johan to learn more about uh, the program to be able to potentially um, you know, launch this uh, globally. So that, um, that's how we started. And, and we reported back to senior um, management the results. And um, you know, it was very favorable, very well received by our uh, senior leaders and um, and our actually our chief supply chain officer announced you know that commitment to um, you know our, our supply chain in 2018 um, and that really you know launched the program uh, for us so so yes we did do kind of a pilot as as a test and learn um, initially wow and I and I guess I'm learning a little bit about just the fact that you announced it um, from your supply chain right and. Um, as Denise is mentioning, all the upstream and all of the vendors that really get on board and can make that larger impact on your ability to pursue it. So um, I'm, I'm curious, and, and then we'll go to you, Denise, to hear you know this concept right of a vendor being on board and helping. You know, you mentioned cleaning products, but Casey, for Colgate Palmolive, was there anything that um, kind of surprised you about a vendor? that either really change like their packaging or the makeup of their product so that it could really help you be achieving your zero waste goals. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that, you know, for the most part, we've received very, you know, positive feedback from suppliers willing to work, um, you know, with our facilities. And, and in that respect, it, it's more, you know, on the facility level with them, you know, kind of engaging, you know, with their suppliers and, and working on particular, you know, projects, you know, to reduce, um, you know, packaging or, or things like that. But, um, but yeah, I think, I don't know if there's any one, 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 you know, project that stands out. Um, Johan, I don't know if you, you know, have any thoughts on that, but, um, but just general, you know, overall positive response from suppliers. Yeah, I, I would say in general, I mean, we were amazed by the enthusiasm that even suppliers had to join the story. I mean, rarely did we find any resistance. And the more you talk about it, the more people would, would want to be part of this. So that's what we found. And it's like a, 
snowball effect. You know, so. Yeah, that's that's really great. Um, I think that that's what's so exciting about seeing, um, you know, your both of your companies um, and, and Denise. I'm curious, like what other um, I know some of your clients are confidential, but are there others that you can share with us portfolios that are um, are public and, you know, commitments that they have made um, and how you think that's really impacting um, maybe that industry as a whole? Yeah, uh, so there are, um, so one of our clients, it's a, uh, the majority of our clients are um, developers and property management companies. Uh, one of them uh, that we've been working with them um, is the Hudson Pacific Properties, uh, who has a, a net zero goal by 2025. Um, I. What I do love, many things I love about this client is that uh, they have several different type of buildings. So they have uh, commercial buildings, they own a ferry building in San Francisco, which is a historical landmark. Uh, it's a ferry building. So, you know, it's almost like a transportation building slash market and um, they own studios like movie studios and so on. So. Um, and it's very interesting and I think it's very encouraging to see even a company like Hudson Pacific that has such a different variety of uh, type of buildings, um, it's still pursuing zero waste and it's um, not holding them back because you know there, there are different challenges for different buildings, different realities. So that's one of them. Um, another big, um, portfolio that we were working on is uh, Tishman Spire. They just announced their zero waste goals, I think like a few days ago. Uh, so, and they, the other interesting part about this characteristic about this um, client is that they have buildings all over the world. We are working with them on their offices um, around the United States, but, you know, again, this, the, 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 the true zero waste certification could, can be applicable around the world is not just in the US or not just in California or anything like that. So um, it it's very interesting to work with uh, clients like um, like this too, that um, and other clients that we work with, that we can disclose that had different typology of buildings, but they are still pursuing zero waste. Great. Well, yeah, and I love um, hearing the experience you have with a lot of the commercial properties. And then, you know, much like you mentioned, Casey, that you have you know, you're, you're doing your first warehouse, right? And that some of these others are more manufacturing production type facilities. So let's get into the nitty gritty a little bit about um, how this is actually done. So um, Casey, can you share a little bit about, you know, especially folks on the call that might want to get started, like who puts together the documentation for your true certification applications? And like, how do you delegate that, especially um, amongst a, a large portfolio like you have? Yep, great, great question. So, so our, our site level people are actually the ones who put together the documentation for the applications. And, and the way that we have kind of managed this is that there's there's three people at the global global level that that lead our true efforts. So that's myself, Johan, and uh, Nitin Road, who is our Asia Pacific EHS and sustainability manager. So um, so what we do is we initially, when, when there are sites that are ready to begin their true uh, journey, uh, we will hold uh, what we call true zero waste workshops that are aimed at reviewing each of the true credits to ensure that our folks on the ground understand the expectations. And then we will hold you know, weekly or biweekly meetings with the sites to review their compliance with their credits. Um, prior to COVID, we would often visit sites um, and spend a week you know, helping them identify you know, the types of information or examples needed um, you know, for each credit. And, and then we would follow up um, with the sites during these you know, weekly or biweekly calls. Um, and myself, Johan, and Nitin serve as kind of like the final reviewer or the, you know, people to contact if, if, if a site has questions about a credit or if certain documentation meets the intent of the credit, um, we'll answer those questions and, and again, like I said, kind of be that final reviewer and, and approver of the application prior to, um, you know, submitting it to True. And, um, and, and what we 
really ask sites to do and, and promote is that they really have to develop a green team um, at the site. For us, it, it's, it mostly falls on our EHS staff to, to be the leaders of the true activities at their site, but it really requires the involvement of many different people. So that's you know, procurement, operations, facilities management. So it's, it's very important to develop that, that green team at each site, um, you know, comprised of people from these different departments to help you know, with, in those efforts of gathering the documentation and writing the narratives and so forth. Yeah, so I think um, you know, the benefit of, uh, you, know, you guys have been doing true before we've had this portfolio pro program together, um, but I, I'm curious on like what kind of corporate level actions you're doing to really support um, you know, these on-site professionals. So are you kind of breaking it up and saying like, you know, these are credits that we've previously earned and here's some documentation. And then that local green team does sort of the more site specific, or do you see that that is like how it will evolve now that the portfolio program um, is, is more formalized by us? Yeah, I, I, I think that it will evolve. And, and what, what we currently have, you know, we do have some global directives and programs that apply to most sites like our corporate zero waste goals or our electronic man management of change program. So we've developed some standardized language and slides for these programs. And then the sites will add their, you know, examples of their local implementation of, of those. Um, you know, and one of the things that we, we also developed was a, a shared drive with all of the certification packages from each facility um, that's already been certified that other sites can reference so they can, you know, review the applications that have been submitted, all of the documentation to either, um, you know, it, it gives sites an idea of the type and level of information needed, and it also helps them get ideas or examples that could be applicable to their facility as well. So we found that that's been um, very, very helpful, you know, with these sites that are just starting the process. Yeah. And Denise, what about you? So um, as a consultant, right, I know that that's probably a big part of the value you bring to the um, project team is doing some of this documentation for them. But how are you kind of working across um, a company that has multiple sites? Um, is there, you know, one point of contact or do you work with multiple people across these multiple portfolio facilities? Yeah, I think it all depends on the company, how the company is organized um, and all that. But Normally, we we like to uh, work with uh, we start working with their sustainability team. Um, that's when uh, we start working. Very similar uh, process that Casey, Casey mentioned. Um, we establish like a standard documentation policies and tools um, across that will be used across the the company across the portfolio, and then. Uh, depending on each of the sub, I would say there's like groups uh, inside of the, the portfolio. Um, we, we start working with each of the site uh, managers um, or a site management or facilities management team, as well other team as uh, Casey mentioned. Very, very similar process. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that we are uh, the same page in terms of workshop, like have a kickoff meeting, making sure that everybody is in the same page, understand the same goals, we're timeline when we're planning to submit a documentation, when we're planning to, to have the, certificate, the project certify, uh, who is involved in this. Uh, we normally like to break down, um, depending on which credit, who is going to be involved with. So like, for example, the you know, uh, procurement, there's a lot of credits related to uh, sustainable zero waste procurement and, and all that. So we map it out who are, who are the stakeholders that will be involved in each of the, the credits. We like to group the credits as well, depending on uh, who, are, who are the stakeholders. Um, I, I, I like also what Casey mentioned, um, the bi-weekly calls have like monthly calls, definitely very important. It's it's part of the certification to, to have monthly calls, especially because the waste, uh, normally the waste data that you get from your waste hauler, it's monthly. So um, one of the examples uh, that I'm gonna use is not a portfolio, but it's a construction site that we are pursuing um, the full certification. It just got pre-certified and is gonna go for the full certification. It really helps 
uh, have like monthly calls uh, reviewing the waste data that we get from the waste hauler. And we actually sit down with the waste hauler uh, on this specific project be, and, and review. They have, they even take pictures. They kind of do like a mini uh, visual inspection of every load that comes to their facility and we review. And uh, it gives us time to like, okay, let's create a strategy here. So the next loads, the next um, waste, uh, you know, materials are, this material is not, not gonna go to waste. So what are the strategies that we could do? Uh, so like definitely like monthly calls or biweekly, uh, you know, small uh, meetings and, and things like that really help uh, to, to keep the team engaged and everybody moving forward. Yeah, and I think Denise, even those recommendations are good for single projects, portfolio and, and individual projects. Um, so Johan, I wanna to go to you a little bit and maybe just hear from your perspective, like some of the story, how has True impacted Colgate Palmolive? You've been you know, at the organization for, um, for a really good tenure. And so how have you seen it change Colgate Palmolive? And you know, I'm sure you have stories about challenges uh, that you've overcome. So we'd love to hear um, a little bit of your perspective. Yeah, so uh, I would think uh, at the end of the day, it made us a better company. Um, I mean, again, uh, we were just absolutely amazed on how many people uh, volunteered for this opportunity. So, you know, something that we found is don't appoint someone to be your true advisor at the site go and ask for volunteers because those are really people that want to do it. Yeah. Um, then, you know, in, in terms of learning from each other, I think um, the biggest, it's okay to do one site, but to go and scale it to an organization all over the world with different uh, regions, countries, cultures, you know, it's a different story. And I think we are, we've got, we've got 22 sites, but we are still learning as we go because, you know, we've done some regions and now we get to a, 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 diff, a different region, new region, a different culture, different language. They understand the language different. You know, it's like you, you basically learn as you go. So in a sense, I wouldn't say that Colgate overcame it. I would say that our employees over, overcomes it as we go, because they are really stepping up. That's the first point I wanna make. Um, and then the other thing that I think that was really valuable in the beginning is that we actually visited the sites when we kicked this off. So if a site would need advice, we've been at the site, we know exactly what's happening there, we know the people. And that I think gave us a lot of traction and on the ground in terms of future working with these people. Unfortunately, um, we couldn't do that in the past two years. It has impacted our speed of rollout a little bit. We are, you know, we are working on that and overcoming that, but I think we are probably going a little bit slower as everyone uh, would recognize. Um, so uh, yeah, anything, you know, then in terms of, uh, zero waste initiatives all over the world. I think the program gives you then a good opportunity to roll out like material packaging goals and then implement them worldwide. You know, it, and then the other thing that we've seen is like, yes, you can have a worldwide goal, but every region sort of works a little bit differently. So you have to be a little bit flexible to implement in that region, that specific goal with a little bit of a different uh, impetus in terms of suppliers and, and that kind of capability. So uh, any anything else? Um, yeah, so we had a question come in the chat and actually yeah. about, um, do you have true advisors at each of your sites around the world? Um, or is it is it just kind of the, the three of you, you and you two and Nitin? So, so uh, that's also actually a very interesting question because Myself and Casey was the first true advisors. And, you know, as we scaled the program, we realized, you know, the sites are just getting more and myself and Casey cannot do everything. So we, you know, got a few more advisors, uh, you know, to, to take the course. But then what we found is like, to actually complete the documentation, you need a specific mindset. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you know, you would say, um, you know, one thing that I do know is that if you if you have a specific site, 
only one or two people can complete the documentation. They need to work with a green team, get the information, but to go and think that seven or eight people are, is gonna answer your true questionnaire for you, I think, you know, is, is, is not really gonna happen because that one or two persons that knows how the documentation needs to be done, what GBCI needs, it just goes so much faster. So in new regions where we roll out, you know, we have put new people to the true advisory course. They are also learning. And, uh, you know, it will take a little bit of time for them to understand how the documentation works, that kind of thing. So that's, you know, in, in short, uh, my, my comment on that. Right. Well, and I think your answer supports, um, you know, one of the requirements of the portfolio that Emily outlined earlier that you, we, we require you to have one point of contact for that portfolio so yeah. that, that you do have that kind of expert that knows kind of what documentation to gather and, and whatnot. Um, so I don't know, Emily, are there some other questions we want to take? I, I don't uh, want to dictate. Can I, yeah. Can come I on, say one, one little thing. Um, I just, I, what I hear a lot from different clients is that, um, especially for commercial buildings, when they have multiple tenants and all that, that they, they feel like not encouraged to pursue the, the zero waste uh, journey. Um, so I just wanna mention that don't feel discouraged. Um, there is the pre-certification that you can start the journey. You can also pursue, and correct me if I'm wrong, Emily and Susie, um, you can still pursue the, the pre-certification path as a portfolio as well. Mm -hmm. So um, not necessarily because you're, you're building it so far to achieve 90% diversion rates that you should not start your zero waste journey. You should start no matter what. And, and GBCI um, has the tools for, for you to, to do that. So I uh, just want to point that out because a lot of people say, well, but we're so far from 90% diversion rates. So do not feel discouraged about that. Yeah, well, one point I would like to say that, yeah, we are lucky we have facilities operating 24 seven. So, uh, you know, I can understand that, uh, you know, with the lockdowns and in high rise buildings, uh, that will probably delay a little bit of, because there's actually no people <laughs> inside, you know, so I can understand that. Yeah, I mean, Johan, you bring up the point that we actually just had the question in, in the chat about, um, you know, doing true pre-pandemic, right? Like, what was that like versus you know, maybe during the pandemic, I, I don't know that we can say we're post pandemic yet. <laughs> we're in some sort of uh, limbo, but managing those challenges, because there's so much less waste being generated with people working from home, et cetera. So, um, you know, Denise or, or Johan would, would love, or Casey, you know, any of you would chime in on how this is affecting, you know, your certifications um, that you're pursuing. Yeah, I, I would say from, from, from Colgate's perspective or from my perspective, um, you know, for the factories, it doesn't really influence us at all, except for we would have loved to go and do those side visits, talk to the people, connect, because we can advise them better. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, Casey, I, maybe you can talk about the, the, the office part and the warehouse part, because that's, we've just started that journey. Um, yeah, so, so part of our, our new goal, like I said, is to certify 100% of our global operations. So that includes our, our large office um, office locations. And, and yeah, you know, we're struggling. We wanted to start, you know, like last year, you know, with the offices and, and we're wondering, you know, how, how are we going to do this when nobody's there? Um, but, but we are starting very slowly um, working with um, some of our facilities management partners um, you know, to, to do whatever we can now, um, you know, before people come back into the offices, like right sizing containers, you know, doing those kind of, you know, audits like that, uh, signage, you know, anything that we can do to, um, you know, to help the process now. 
Um, for our manufacturing sites, like Johan said, it hasn't impacted too much. I think, um, as was mentioned before, it's probably just slowed it down a little bit because our EHS staff are often those that are also implementing, you know, the COVID policies and such. So their time has been taken, um, you know, doing that versus, you know, maybe working on their their true application. And same with our, our warehouse locations as well. Um, that would that would be um, the, the same with those, you know, extra steps that need to be taken um, with COVID. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, so happy to, to hear again that uh, uh, we're on the same page as, as Colgate. Definitely, we are uh, helping clients work, uh, to, to uh, reevaluate their uh, current infrastructure. Uh, one of the, um, the credits for the pre-certification and the full certification, it's related to redesign understand um, your current contract with waste haulers, uh, what kind of infrastructure you have, how many bins you have. Do you really need like 10 bins for compostables or do you just need six or five, right? Um, so like all those things we've been helping clients and uh, it's actually in a good way, uh, the pandemic brought like this opportunity for us that uh, the property managers, the site managers are not, as much as busy they are in before the pandemic where they're like 100% occupancy and a lot of problems, you know, managing of properties, it's not easy. So um, now they have a little more time to sit down with us and reevaluate and analyze what is actually going on in when it comes to waste and even changing desk bins to central collection points and uh, redesign their signage and things like that. So that's the positive, the silver lining aspects of the pandemic for our clients, for sure. Um, I, I want to introduce my my colleague, um, Michaela, on it, because I think, Michaela, we might have a question um, that, that's been addressed kind of from the audience as well, that um, if, if you want to join back and, and maybe ask some of those questions, I think we have a over 40 people that are staying on to, to keep listening. So thank you all for your continued engagement. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And as I put in the chat, if you guys have any questions and need to jump off, because I know we're over a little bit, definitely reach out to True at GBCI and we will uh, get back to you on answering those questions. Um, so uh, one question we have for either Casey or Johan. Uh, from Katie Robbins asked, our suppliers are not enthusiastic to support our zero waste goals because it has financially financial impacts for them. So when you launched your program, did you specifically contract with new suppliers who were on board from the beginning or did you have success with changing relationships with existing suppliers? I, I, I would say, I mean, uh, that's a fair question because at the end it all, it's all about money. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I think uh, mostly we would have we would work with the same suppliers and money is going to come into the question and then this is how you agree to to do that but I in general I think that we are working with the same suppliers we didn't change suppliers yeah I, I would I would agree with that I, I think a lot of the suppliers that that we work with already have waste goals so they're already on board um, I, I can't think of a situation where where a, a facility stopped using a, a supplier um, because they couldn't support us, you know, with our um, zero waste uh, goals. Um, so I don't think it's really been an issue for us so much. Nice, nice. All right. So one other, and I know you guys touched on this a little bit, but just wanted to ask in case there's anything you would like to add um, from Doreen. Doreen um, she noticed that working with larger companies with multiple locations that they're often siloed and the locations don't generally talk to each other or they operate individually, even though they're under the same umbrella. So how do you work with them if they want to use portfolio, true portfolio certification? Yeah, I mean, I mean, for us, you know, sure, there, there's, you know, some siloing, but, but we have, um, you know, certain product categories. So our, our, our facilities are kind of lumped together under those or, or you know, the ones that are located in, um, you know, particular regions communicate very well with each other. So I don't, I don't know if we really have, you know, so much siloing, but I mean, we're, 
you know, Johan and I are going to have to sit down and really look at this, you know, portfolio uh, program to see if it, um, you know, is something that will work for us. Be because I think that we, we do still have a lot of um, credits that are, you know, that would be like individual um, credits specific to, you know, certain facilities. So, um, so I, I think for us, it's going to be, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, looking at the program, you know, talking with Emily and, and seeing how we can, um, you know, incorporate that into our um, portfolio. Because I mean, with the number of sites that we still have to um, achieve certification for, I mean, streamlining the process in any way would be, you know, very helpful for us. Yes, and um, I don't know if, uh, Denise, if you want to add anything on that yeah. as well. I, yeah, thank you. I definitely will uh, promote the leadership, uh, that the leadership, again, you can get points for that, uh, that the leadership get involved, that the message comes from the top down, even that the facilities operate almost individually. It's very important that the leadership uh, buys uh, the zero waste goal and the zero waste mission, and then send it out to each of the facilities. As, as I mentioned, uh, one of our clients, they have a studio, they have a transportation facility, they have commercial buildings and so on. But the message, it's coming from the leadership. So no matter what kind of uh, facility, what kind of building uh, we're talking about, somehow based on their reality and their challenges, they need to achieve zero waste. But the goal, and they will do, based uh, you know based on their budget and all, on all that so and then their team uh, so they operate individually but the message come from the top and that's very important i i think that what we've seen um from a lot of the companies that we've worked with over time portfolio or not that um it really does start with that top but then that next or first you know facility that gets certified, they have a story to tell, right? There's a culture that's changed. There's saving, cost savings that happens. And so then it becomes easier for those next couple of ones to do it. Um, and then in some cases, you have the benefit of, you know, maybe even friendly competition internally. So um, I, I'm excited to see how some of that rolls out with, you um, you know, other other groups that have made these like 100% of projects to achieve true um, are, are similar to Colgate Palmolive. They do have different, you know, pet care versus, you know, oral health and all these uh, different lines. And so how do you like learn from each other, maybe have some friendly competition and ultimately push everything forward? Yeah, um, so one other question uh, for Emily, actually, I know you addressed this in your, um, in the Q&A box, but just in case there's other attendees on that are interested, uh, if you want to clarify a little bit more on prototype credits and how you would apply for them. Yeah, so you apply for both prototype and master credits during the 